Hi, my name is Stanley Davids, and welcome to Torah Gems on Friday. Tomorrow is a very special day. There are many things going on. It's uh, Shabbat Chol HaMoed Pesach. It is the Sabbath in between the opening and closing festive days of Passover. Uh, we have a special Haftarah uh, that is read this week. It is from Ezekiel chapter 37. It's called The Vision of the Valley of Dry Bones. Now, you may know this. It's a story about bone joining unto bone. And, and in fact, the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones, uh, those of you who are music aficionados will know, has been set to masterful recordings both by Alvin and the Chipmunks uh, and Fish, uh, in which they go, dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones, that deals with Ezekiel. It connects to Passover because Passover celebrates the liberation of our people from slavery, and Ezekiel is talking about a return, a rebirth of our people following the Babylonian captivity. So it's wonderful. Now, we've also begun the Sfirah, the counting of the Omer, and uh, Saturday evening will be the fifth day of the counting of the Omer. Uh, and so Passover continues during all of this. Shabbat Shalom, Moadim Simcha, which is the appropriate greeting, not Chag Sameach. Today it's Chol HaMoed Pesach, so we say Moadim Simcha, happy festivals. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you're joining this now international community of people who find a few minutes on Friday morning uh, just to study Torah and to enter into a conversation. I value your comments. Uh, please, please, please be in touch via email uh, at smdtorah at uh, gmail.com. And when you finish this today, please hit share. Let others in your community, your friends, colleagues, friends, or whatever, family, uh, join in as well. I would appreciate that. And of course, you can follow us on YouTube. Baruch Atadonai Elohim Melech Olam. Asher Kedishan Ritzotah V'tzivanu Lasok B'divrei Torah. This Shabbat, there are actually two Torah readings, two different scrolls. And the interesting thing is that these readings are not connected with last week's reading or with next week's reading. It's just the special reading for Shabbat Chol HaMoed Pesach. The first reading is from Exodus 33.12 to 34.26, and the closing reading is from Numbers 28.19 and following. The Exodus passage, first of all, sets up the sacred Jewish calendar, beginning to talk about the three major festivals, what would become uh, Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot, and how we observe them and so forth. These are the pilgrimage festivals. But it also portrays a fascinating encounter between Moses and God, and we could spend forever on this encounter. Moses says to God, I can't go on this way. This is terrible. This is awful. I can't be a good leader because I don't know you. Let me know you. Let me see you, and then I'll be a much better leader. God demurs and no, this isn't going to happen. No one sees my face, but I'll pick you up, put you in a cleft of rock. I'll pass by. You'll see my back, and that will be cool. That will be good enough. Uh, very interesting passage. We know that the rabbis fiercely opposed anthropomorphism, seeing God, describing God in any kind of physical shape. So what does it mean? I'll put you in a cleft. You can see my back. God's back? What's that? Rashi, Rashi suggests, following a Talmudic reference, that God let Moses see the knot at the back of God's head tefillin. I just happen to have a pair of tefillin here. These are tefillin, this is head tefillin, goes over the head like this, like this, goes over here, and here's the knot, that's the knot back here, and God lets Moses seize the knot on the back of the head tefillin that God wears. Okay, I mean, fine, all right. Uh, Sforno indicates that God lets Moses come to know God by teaching Moses that the best way to know God is by observing how the world works, by observing God's functions, teaching us that the only real way for us to know who, what God is, by observing the world as we know it. And nevertheless, even with all of that, we will never know why God does what God does. The second Closing Torah reading deals with the special sacrifices for Passover. There's much richness here. But I would like to deal with one specific aspect that ties together the whole theme of Passover and all that's going on. That's the idea 
of freedom. While preparing for today, I came across a passage in material published by Aisha Torah, an Orthodox Jewish outreach group. And in that text, there's a quotation from one of the Jewish teachers of our time, one of the greatest Jewish intellectuals of the 20th century, at least in terms of the impact that person had on me, Dr. Viktor Frankl. I had a chance to meet Frankl only once. It is forever remembered as a privilege. Dr. Frankl is the founder of Logotherapy. One of Frankl's seminal books is From Death Camp to Existentialism. Homework assignment, read the book. From Death Camp to Existentialism, Viktor Frankl, V F R A N K L. Frankl addressed freedom specifically in another of his books called Man's Search for Meaning. What is freedom, Frankl writes? Everything can be taken from a person but one thing. The last of human freedoms is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. The last of human freedoms is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Frankl had lost everything, Auschwitz. The Nazis had total control over every aspect of his life, or so they thought. No home, no profession, no privacy, no identity, no physical well-being, perhaps even no hope. Then it began to dawn on Frankl, a secular revelation, if you will, that even with everything stripped away, even as he had been denied his own basic humanity, even when all that was left of his freedom was a memory of that which once was and which probably never would be again, he still had not lost one great source of personal strength. His capacity to choose how he would respond to life as it is. Frankl wrote, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is the power to choose our response. In that power lie our growth and our freedom. Frankl understood that if we hold on to our power to choose, we will never lose our own humanity. We will never lose our dignity, no matter what the conditions are that we have to endure. There are times when we find ourselves in our own individual Egypts. We have become slaves to our own passions, to our compulsions, to habits that have taken control of our daily lives, or we make mistakes. And those mistakes become like cruel taskmasters, relentlessly beating us, endlessly, mercilessly, without any hope of relief. Or we blame others for our condition, and thus we abandon all hope of ever changing things. We're not responsible. Our parents mistreated us. Our boss is unfair. I am a victim of, of political intrigues and trends too large for me to resist. The devil made me do it. I'm not responsible. All that I have to do right now is collapse. Who then is responsible for whether we can yet retain some hope in our lives? Frankel would indicate we are. And it was that insight that allowed him to survive literally a living hell. And it is that insight that allowed him to create the entire field of logotherapy, meaning therapy, helping people to find meaning in their own lives and with that discovery of meaning to survive. Ultimate freedom is to be found not in our external conditions, but in our own capacity to choose how we view ourselves, how we view our lives, how we find meaningful choices in seemingly meaningless situations. My friends, freedom begins with our decision to take charge of our joys and our sorrows, our suffering and our deliverance, and to invest all of that with meaning, our meaning. That's it for today. Meaning, may the sweetness of freedom 
be ours to choose. Shabbat Shalom. Moadim Lasimcha.